First question, Dave up front. Chris, the Bucks fought back to make this a couple possession game in the fourth a couple times. Once Booker hit a three to make it six to nine. Another time, they had seven. Book hits two threes in a row. Why is he built for those type of moments? Big time. Big time. Um, he could tell you better than I can, but he didn't train and work his whole life for these moments. You know, and our team all season long has been, you know, you put the work in, you live with the results. So if Book shoot it, I expect it to go in. I get mad at him when he don't shoot, <laughs> you know, so big shots. And that one sequence you had to end the first half, nine or ten passes, eight and ends up with an and one. Uh, as you were passing rubbed off on these guys, or how do you explain that one? Uh, we, we have a saying with our team, uh, it's called good to great. You know, we pass up good shots to get great shots. And it's the unselfishness of, of our team. Any coach in America, I'm sure they love to show their team that clip. And, you know, DA finished it at the end. Dwayne up front. Yeah, Chris, you've, you've talked about how Mikael and how much you, you know, you're proud of DeAndre, but seeing Mikael do what he did tonight, career high, 27 points in the playoffs. I be on Kale so crazy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because uh, Kale is just a winner. You know, he was a, he's a winner. Uh, when we won the Western Conference uh, Finals, I looked at him and I had a flashback of him being at Villanova. You know what I mean? I remember him winning the championship there and you know, he, he's just a winner. He's going to do whatever you need him to do, offensively or defensively, and uh, it's good to see him playing like this. Quick follow. Dave was talking about that one possession at the end of the first half, that possession in the fourth where, you know, a shot is missed, Mikhail runs it down, then another shot is missed, Aiden gets the rebound and kicks it to you in the corner for a three that you hit. How big was that sequence? You guys were up six at that point. It went up big. It was huge. Line. It was probably, it was like the play of the game, you know, DA, you know, he, he was, he's so hard on himself. He's so mad at how he played or whatnot. But uh, I tell him if he doesn't get that offensive rebound and find me there in the corner, that was probably the biggest play of the game. So it just shows you how we all have to stay the course. Rachel on the left. Hey, Chris. Um, athletes who've been doing it for a long time toward the end of their careers, like Derek Jeter or Pete Sampras, when they were vets, they said that it was sometimes harder to stay in the moment of those championship series because you knew too much. Like, you knew how hard and how long you had been to get there. And Jeter used to talk about the World Series at the beginning of my career were easy. It was the ones in the last few years that I really had a harder time staying in the moment. Have you experienced that at all? Uh, no, I have a pretty good um, – I do a pretty good job of staying in the moment. You know, maybe – a lot of the guys on our team, it's their first playoff series. You know, they don't know the heartache or the heartbreak. They just out there playing. So for me, um, I know how quick things can change. I know how a possession or a play can change the dynamics of an entire series. So for me, um, I don't get too high. I don't get too low. I just stay, stay even keel. It wasn't always like that, you know, but I, I know that these um, situations are, you know, don't, don't happen every day. Mark up front. Hey, Chris, I know Devin's still got his young legs in him, but what do you notice he does to be able to play at a high motor throughout the game? He just stay in attack mode all game long. You know what I mean? And I, that's what I love about him. And um, I think me and him together, we've just built so much trust. You know, he like, here, see, go. You know, I go to him. And... Whatever happens during the game, you just know that there's never any uh, malicious intent. You know, he just wants to win. He's going to do whatever he has to do to, to help our team win, and it's nice. Mark, over here. Chris, um, looking back to when you were traded here, what were your initial thoughts when you got the news? And could you have foreseen at this time being on this stage? I know me. I know how hard I worked during the summer. I know how I play. Uh, I knew the pieces that was here. I knew Book was here. And like I say, I knew the pieces. I knew mine. I knew that we would have a system. I knew that we would build trust. So uh, I'm, I'm not surprised. And, and what did you think about James having confidence in you? Uh, 
uh, JJ is our GM, but he is like my counterpart, He's like my brother, you know what I mean? So like we done been through so many different things with the CBA negotiations, so um, it was easy to, to talk to him about me wanting to be here. And um, it's nice when you have a relationship like that because you can be honest no matter what, good or bad, you know you're going to shoot it to each other straight, and that's how it's always been. Palmer on Zoom. I'm going to go to Mark Schwartz with ESPN. Chris, Devin always says that he doesn't run from moments like these. Very few players are really built like that. What is it about him that allows him to embrace and fearlessly go after moments this big? I mean, Book has 70 in the game before. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you don't, you don't do that being shy. <laughs> you don't do that being shy. And, and like I said, he puts the work in. That's what a lot of people don't see. You see the games, you don't see uh, all the shots after practice and all this different type of stuff. So um, he built for it. He built for it. And like I said, that was something that I saw before I came here. And um, it's, it's nice to, to be on his team. Gina up front. Chris, uh, yeah, when you talk about those things that we don't see, like what do you wish that we could see if we were flies on the wall, like at the practice facility afterwards as far as just the work that that book does does put in? Um, just him? You talking yeah. him or our team? Sure, yeah, yeah, just to stay on that topic. Um, book, I don't know, it's the, it's the treatment, it's the shots, it's the, it's the everything, you know, we – we have a day in between games or something. I might shoot a little, then sit out, book like Willie. I want to shoot some shots going here. I want to shoot some shots here. And everything is, um, is game speed. But we got a work team, so it's not just book. It's Cam, Payne, it's Jay, it's everybody. We got a work team, and um, it's nice to be a part of. The two of you building that trust, what do you feel like the key was, was to doing that, and how, how long? I know you guys gelled right from the jump but did was there a point where you feel like it kind of reached a, a different level um I don't know I don't know I just know that I remember being on that one road trip and coach telling us we had the worst plus minus start starting five right. <laughs> that hurt that hurt I ain't never been on the, the minus side or any of that <laughs> stuff but we knew that we had to figure it out if we wanted to get where we are now we knew we had to figure it out so we did and we uh we're going to keep it going. How, how did you figure it out? Uh, I don't know. I think our defense got better. We started working on screening angles. We started running our sets. Um, I missed most of training camp. Right. You know, I missed a lot of that time, so I didn't really know the offense like that. And so once we started playing and getting the continuity, and once you get some wins, you really start getting confidence. Anthony, last question. Yeah, you guys hit 23s tonight, which is actually tied for the second most in finals history. But, uh, I mean, even that look right there, have you gotten used to how non-abnormal it seems for a team to hit 23s in a game in, in the modern era? Yeah, I played in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we shot a lot of threes. You know, but, um, you know, with our team, you, we, we got shooters, you know, like real shooters. And I say this all the time, it's nice when you kick it to the guy and you expect him to make it. You know, you expect them to make it. Like, I get mad at some of these guys when they miss it. They miss it. I'd be like, come on, man. You don't, you don't miss that in practice. And, all, and, and it's different, too, when you know the work that they put in, right? So when shoot-around is over, practice over, everybody don't leave the gym. Everybody's still in their shoot, still in their shooting. So that's the trust that you build because you know the guys didn't put in the work. How much can that save you like first quarter tonight you guys only made one two and we're kind of outplayed but you hit a, I think eight threes and and stayed in the game how much can just like a hot shooting quarter kind of save a team Should help anybody <laughs> to help anybody what they always say is to make a miss league you know and uh the fact that our guys had the confidence to continue shooting it even if it's not going in we like you're gonna make the next one you're gonna make the next one we we got a team full of guys if a guy pass up a shot probably going to get cussed out, right, because you know what everybody's capable of. Thank you, Chris. All right, no problem.